Yeah? Yes. Yes. Yep. Okay, yep. fabulous. So I've I've literally this is not going to be a very big presentation. It's just two slides and it basically has all the information on it that I have in my head <laughs> when it comes to storytelling. And I am very passionate about storytelling and I haven't always been there. But actually, as we progress through this discussion, you will start to realize, and as you're already reading ahead on the slide, because I know that's human nature, um, you will start to realize that actually it's completely common sense. And when you realize how easy it is, you some of you are already doing it, which is great. So, you know, just keep doing what you're doing and just keep reinforcing it. This may help some of you, you know, perhaps justify or crystallize what you are already doing. And for some of you, it will be perhaps an aha moment to go, yeah, this could be interesting for me when I'm, you know, communicating to my audience. So if you look at the mind map, we're going to start at the right hand side where it says you, <laughs> a big you. And first of all, to say that you are already the biggest storyteller in your life because you organize all of the events, the things, the people that you meet into stories in your brain. To make sense of anything, even when you're listening to my voice, you are creating a story around me. You know, who is this guy? Um, some of you know me, some of you, most of you don't. So you are already trying to say, well, we actually don't know that much about this guy. He, sa he sounds English, but he has a, he doesn't have an English name. He has a slightly foreign name. Where is he from? You are already asking all of these questions in your head right now. And so you're developing a story about me that may or may not be true even, right? And you will realize in your life, you tell stories about stuff that often are not true. But that's OK. That's just what happens in our brain. That's just being human. So just think about, you know, your own storytelling that happens inside your brain, because once you understand that you are already doing this regularly, it will allow you to make sense of what's important when you tell your own story to your audience. And the story is about you. You know, I've got there saying story is about me. It always is. Everybody has a story. Every single person that walks on planet Earth has a story about their lives, where they started, where they went to school, or if they didn't have any education about their parents, about their siblings, about their journey through life. And if you get to a mature age like some of us, then you have a longer story and a longer journey to share. And actually, the most interesting thing about you is your story. Not necessarily what you do right now. What is more interesting about you is where you've come from. What journey have you gone through to allow me to make sense of you, you know, some of the the hardships, some of the highlights of your life, some of the challenges and the highlights in your business, some of your learning, some of your growth. Those are interesting things that you may not think are interesting, but they are interesting to other people. So what I say to people when they're writing their LinkedIn summary or anybody who is writing LinkedIn summaries or profiles for people, Try and get across you a little bit about yourself, a little bit about your story so people get to connect with who you are and where you've come from. Rather than this is what I do, I'm really good at this, you know, this is what people hire me for and you need to hire me too, which is most of the messages and summaries that I see or social profiles. Rather than saying, actually, I'm passionate about this because this is where I've come from. I hope you're getting a sense of that. But then let's think about, you know, storytelling as a subject. There are generally, and there are some other assets to this or some other 
systems to this, but generally there are four stages to any story. They're the, the story set up, you know, developing or explaining who the characters are, explaining where these characters are placed in the world or in the day or in the time or in a century or a decade. Then there is what is the issue? Because in every story, and Hollywood have been doing this for centuries, there is an issue that needs to be solved. You know, there is a problem potentially that people need to solve. The characters in the film or the movie or the story need to solve. Then there is the impact, so the story plays out and all of these characters have got their issues and their challenges and if they don't resolve it, then there's going to be an impact. And usually it's pain or usually it's, um, it's a very bad thing that's going to happen as a result of it if they don't do something. And then comes the resolution, you know, how is it going to be solved, this problem, this challenge that people have? And here comes the white knight or, you know, somebody comes along in shining armor and goes, I can solve your problem or I am the person who solves these problems. And it's no different in business, right? When you are speaking to a client or you are speaking to your audience, this is what we've got to do. We've got to explain to them the story. They have to imagine themselves in that story. So when you're sharing that story, they should be saying to themselves, that sounds just like me. In fact, it could be me. I see myself in that story that you're explaining to say, some of you will have this challenge or this problem that you need to solve. If you don't solve this problem, the impact is going to be something in the future that you're not going to like. You know, it's a little bit like, um, the ghost of Christmas past and the ghost of Christmas future. You know, what are all the things that have happened in the past to you where you haven't taken action? And where are you today? And if you're not going to take action in the future, where are you going to end up? And you could even write a story about a mythical character that is experiencing all these things. And as a result, they're going to get into trouble if they don't take action. So storytelling, because everybody has heard stories throughout their lives. You read books, you, you watch the movies, you watch television. Dare I say, we even watch the adverts. We listen to radio, we listen to podcasts, we listen to, you know, webinars. And so we're creating stories and seeing and experiencing stories every single day, all the time. So it's like the hero's journey, that whole process. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And then if you take, say, books, right? When you were very, very small and your parents or your family read books to you or stories to you, you couldn't even read, right? You may not have even had the images of what those stories explained to you. And you had to create those images in your brain. But they, those stories came alive through you creating those images. And they're not the same images that anybody else has, they're personal to you. This is what happens in people's brains. They create these images and these stories and these narratives, and that allows them to engage with the subject matter. That allows them to be interested and curious. So you have very powerful, all of us have got amazing, powerful imagination when we are told any kind of stories. Now, advertising, they do try and do this, but a lot of advertising that I see, particularly people on LinkedIn, it's like, this is my product or service, buy me, right? And it really doesn't work. To an extent, it must do, because otherwise they wouldn't be advertising and spending the millions of dollars and UK pounds on those adverts to get people to buy stuff, right? So at some stage it works, but the only reason it works is because you're being bombarded with it day in, day out with the same advert. And therefore it goes into your brain and you will buy the product and you don't even know why you're buying it. So we're being brainwashed that way. But truly, if you want people to connect with you, with your business, 
we don't have those millions of dollars to spend on advertising. And if you do have, fantastic. But even so, sharing a story about your product or service or how it's helped somebody, or even describing a character, you know, that's in that journey and you're the hero who's going to, or heroine who's going to assist that person, then a story will last longer. And there truly has been a lot of research on this as well. The story will embed itself in your brain. So the last bit on the left there, I'm talking about when you share a story, you're involving your audience. It relates to them. They can see themselves. I see me in that story because really, you know, the best company and they've recently, you know, released a load of new tech and whether you like Apple or not, they are one of the best storytellers in town because they use their products and they are tech, but they're telling stories around people using that tech. You know, their latest advert was somebody experiencing their products and their services, whether it was, you know, particularly, I think it was about the Apple Watch. And there were people showing how they used the Apple Watch in their lives and what difference it made to them and how it saved lives. And they were telling all these little bites of stories, the person's name, the problem they had, and how that product saved their life or saved their situation as a result of using Apple's product. I'm pretty sure it was the Apple Watch. So it's a huge part of your personal brand, your story. Absolutely. And you you may think, well, no one's going to be interested in my story. Wrong. <laughs> Everybody is interested in your story. That's the most interesting bit about you. So let's talk a little bit about the science, which is how does storytelling affect your brain? And you can have these slides, by the way. Um, no problem. I'll, I'll send them to you. I'll share them with Ted and he can email them to you on his next email. And there's just four areas that I'm going to discuss. The first area I'd like to discuss is the chemical dopamine. And everybody has heard of dopamine is the feel good factor chemical in our brains that if we enjoy something, then we want more of it. So it's where we get addicted. And when we enjoy something and it creates an emotion inside of us, dopamine gets released in the brain. And that allows us to remember something with greater accuracy. If you think now, about something that made you upset. The last thing that you can remember in your life where you were upset, you were angry, or you were sad, or actually you were really happy and it made you laugh about something in, you will remember that and you'll have a much better recall than something that wasn't emotionally charged in your brain. And storytelling does this. If you're able to fire something in their brain and release that dopamine, then people will remember your story for longer. So actually, if you were to share a story that was very personal and a little bit emotional that people have some empathy with you on, then this will be remembered for longer. They will remember who you are and your story for a longer time. Then jumping to the left is something called neural coupling. And this is where, um, different things again that happen in the brain. You've all heard of neurons. Um, a story activates parts in the brain that allows the listener to turn their story in their own ideas and experience thanks to a process called neural coupling. So what they do, very simply speaking, they already have an experience that is stored in their brain, right? So this could be happy, sad, neutral, whatever, it doesn't matter. They can recall an experience and they're looking for your story to match their experience. So if you share a story about, let's say your LinkedIn experience and how you are now getting better results, having learned the techniques that you're learning from Ted and other people around you uh, and from each other indeed, then you as an individual listening to a person sharing that are going to relate that to your own experience and go, actually, I've noticed I've had that experience and I'm experiencing better 
or worse results as a result of doing that. So you're giving it meaning and that's based on the experience that you've already had. So again, if you can match it to something that you've already experienced hearing that bit of a story, then it will have more meaning to you, right? Very, very simple, but it's very effective. Let's talk about mirroring, right? Now, this is, this is where the empathy bit of our brain is taking place massively that in fact I heard Chris the guy who curates TED and everybody's heard of TED talks and Chris is it Chris Anderson he's the curator at TED and he just released I think a few weeks ago a little uh, tutorial on public speaking and one of the things that he explained, and I'm not going to be able to say word for word what he said, but I just remembered that it relates to mirroring, that if a speaker is sharing their story on the stage to a massive group of people, let's imagine these are all the people on LinkedIn <laughs> that are your audience, your connections, your network. And when somebody is sharing their story, they are literally mirroring the speaker's experience in their brains. And everybody is having the same experience at the same time. Always, of course, they are having a slightly different experience, right? It's not always the same experience that you would expect. Um, because everybody has different filters, right? So we're not all experiencing exactly in the same way, but we are all mirroring a very similar experience. And that is the story that the speaker is sharing with us in that moment. And I don't know if you ever listen to TED Talks and you break down what they're doing, but very often, and this isn't always the case, but very often, when they're explaining their idea, their topic, their aha moment of what they've discovered, they very often share a personal story as well, because that makes their idea come alive in the, in the other people's head, right? Because if they don't share a story and they say, this is my big idea and you've got to all take it on board, then everybody's going to turn around and go, yeah, okay, it's a good idea, but I can leave it. But if you now share a story as well that you've experienced it and why you've come up with that idea because of your experience, now people are going to take notice because actually they're more interested in what it meant to you and how you were impacted by it. I hope I'm making sense and happy to debate it when, we, when I've stopped. And then the last thing is a, a little bit harder to understand but it's basically, let's call it movement, right? So I don't know if any of you have ever seen the documentary that came out, I think it was 2005 or six. It was called, What the Bleep Do We Know? A very interesting movie. And there was one little experiment in this actually documentary movie. There was one little experiment and that was they got an athlete to imagine that she was running a, let's say, a 100 meter sprint or something. And what they did, they wired her up to, you know, different scanners and brain things and muscle, like attached wires to her muscles and things, and just got this person to sit down in their chair and imagine they were doing the 100 meter sprint, let's say. And through just imagining what she was doing, all of the muscles fired up as if she was running the race, right? So immediately, even when I'm telling this story, you're imagining some of this in your brain. You are seeing a person sitting down and that creates a movement in your brain through these sensory cortex areas like motor cortex, sensory cortex, frontal cortex of the brain. And this embeds even further 
your understanding of somebody else's story or any story because when you truly are engaged with that story you will empathize you will engage with what people are talking about and you will remember it for longer so when you've got dopamine you've got all these motor cortexes engaging you've got the neural coupling you've got the mirroring all of these different things going on in your brain when a story is well told you are going to remember it you're going to remember the individual and because most of LinkedIn profiles some are even written in the third person but most of them are written about this is what I do for a living and this is how I can improve you know your life those quite frankly are not memorable because everybody is saying the same thing and this goes for any social media channel not just LinkedIn I mean and the last thing to say is why do you think that Facebook and Instagram and Snapchat and all of these channels and even Facebook Messenger are coming out with this facility for people to tell stories you know share us your story share your story with images and words and movies and films and clips and selfies and all of these things because does all of these things in your brain and therefore it becomes addictive and then and then share your you know share these stories and they're going to self explode within 24 hours and that means if I don't go and watch my stories from yesterday or today they won't be there tomorrow and because I get high on these stories it's fact I want to get more of it I want to get my hit of enjoying these stories because actually everybody enjoys stories that's me Ted